Okay, so this is just one of those projects that I think is a lot better explained through demo. All you have to do is record in your beatboxing. Then you take that audio file and feed it into my program. You wait for a second or two while it loads the samples, loads your audio, and loads the model that we'll be using today. And out you get a drum track that sounds exactly like your beatboxing, but with actual drum sounds. So I think that it would be really cool if anyone could make music that they have in their head, but don't have that background knowledge and skills to do that. This is kind of that first step to solving that problem. A lot of people can think of a drum groove or a drum idea for the track, but can't necessarily play the drums or put it down in their program correctly. So I built something that recognizes beatboxing and turns it into actual drums. So our audio waveform needs to be stored in some discrete form meaning that at any given point in time, we need to have a value that represents that point in the sound. Now, when you think about it, if we're gonna store this audio as a waveform, we have to think about what we're storing. For example, let's say I have this incoming sound wave. On the y-axis, I have the amplitude, or the strength of the signal, and on the x-axis, I have time. If I wanna store it as a list of numbers, you know, so I can feed into my neural network, or I can use certain algorithms on, I can sample the amplitude here, 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 and here, but I can also sample it here, 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 and here. And we've just doubled the number of values in our list. We could do this onto infinity, so to mitigate this, we just pick a number that represents how often in the wave we sample. At most mid to high level quality audio, the audio is sampled at 44,100 times per second or 44.1 kilohertz. For our purposes, I've sampled my audio at 22.5 kilohertz, which is actually more than enough. Okay, so now you have the basic design of the system when it's actually being used to convert the beatboxing audio into drums. We have our input waveform, which is the recorded beatboxing, and we have the drum sounds that we say will replace the corresponding instruments represented by the beatboxing. <laughs> Then we analyze the audio for places in the waveform where we think there's an onset or a transient, meaning where we think there's a drum hit that happens. We chop up these waveforms using these onsets into smaller clips. Then we have our pre-processing step. This is to clean up our data and have it ready to be fed into the model. For this project, pre-processing was pretty simple. I normalized the clip, trim the silence off either side of the clip, and then pad the sample to 0.4 seconds long or clip it if it's longer than that. This is because it's a trum hit and generally the part we're interested in is really short and at the beginning of the sample. The next part of the pipeline is extracting our features from our audio data. Our features are the data or the representation of the data that we're gonna use to actually train the model and later to make predictions on our data with. Features can be anything. For example, with stock prediction, your features are usually the opening and closing price of the stock, for example. Or with image classification, your features are going to be the actual pixels of the image. But in this case, I'm going to take the audio data and transform it into something called the MEL spectrogram. The MEL spectrogram is a way to transform our waveform into a way that better describes frequencies over time. Then we take the spectrogram and basically treat it like an image classification problem. Here are some examples of MEL spectrograms taken from the actual data that was used to train the model. For example, here's a kick, here's a snare, and here's a hi-hat. Even after just showing you one or two examples of each, you could probably tell me, by looking at a new one, what drum sound is contained in that MEL spectrogram. And this is the basic idea with our model. We're going to feed in a bunch of these examples of kicks, snares, and hi-hats, in the form of these MEL spectrograms and then tell it what each example is. Then, over time, the model gets better and better and better at predicting what kind of sound it is. Now let's go over the model. The nice thing about Torch Audio and PyTorch is that I can actually use the MEL spectrogram layer in my model so that the computation happens on the GPU and it's baked into the model itself. 
Then we have our convolutional layer, which has a ReLU activation function, and then a max pool 2D. Another convolution layer with the same activation and the same max pooling. Then we flatten our data into a vector and feed it through three fully connected layers, both with dropout in between. Finally, we have our last fully connected layer, which has three outputs. One for a kick, one for a snare, and one for a hi-hat. Okay, so that was a pretty long-winded and detailed way of saying we have our audio waveform, we chop it up where we think there's drum sounds, we feed each drum sound into our model, which tells us what it thinks it is. If the model thinks it's a kick, for example, then we take our actual drum sound and replace that in our audio. The end result is basically that we replaced all the audio of our beatboxing with actual drum sounds. Okay, that's it for this video. Uh, this video took a really, really long time to make, uh, way longer than it should have. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and a sub and leave a comment of what you thought. Uh, leave any ideas you have. I have a ton of them, but I could always use some more. Um, and I hope to see you guys next time.